This video focuses on data densification using Tableau's relationship model, available since Tableau version 2020.2 on the desktop. Before we get into data densification, let's go through a really quick example of how this works. This example shows institutions in British Columbia, Canada on a map. However, if we want to add lines to the map, these curves can point over to another place in the world. This technique was pioneered by Wendy Shigia, which is featured on the Fleur-Ledge Twins website. It's linked below. We use these curves to draw from a small geographic area, British Columbia on this map near the top center, over to the bottom left covering Australia and New Zealand with a bar chart that gives us a better sense of how many students are enrolled at each institution. The advantage to this approach is that we can use data densification to create the curved lines but with Tableau's new data model, we can also have a standard bar chart which conveys totals and isn't padded uh, or multiply, multiplied or duplicated. Clicking on an individual institution, we can then see more information about them as well. Data densification is the backbone to a number of different visualization types. Another example of this also from the Fleurledge Twins website, is creating a Sankey funnel in Tableau, or other kinds of Sankey charts. Really many different kinds of charts that involve curves that aren't built into Tableau out of the box rely on data densification as a concept. The Fleurledge Twins have a great blog post on how this concept works. We're going to take some of the same concepts and demonstrate them here in this video. So let's see an example of how this could impact our visualizations. The version on the left is an old version of Tableau before the relationship data model was available. Here we've got a densified data source and a number of charts related to it. On the right is the new model after relationships were made available. What we see right now is a map of British Columbia on both sides. So far, so good. So what happens when we click Start? What we can see now is that we've got wildly different totals on each side. For example, you may notice that SFU in the chart on the left has 3.4 million students, and the chart on the right, 34,000. I can assure you that 34,000 is the more correct example. The reason that this happens is because the version on the left is densifying our data across all of the different worksheets that we're using it. It's a one-size-fits-all approach. The version on the right leverages Tableau's new relationship model, so it's densifying where it needs to, such as for the curved lines, and not densifying where it doesn't need to, such as for the bar chart, the line chart, and the text that we see. So let's dig into how densification works using the new data model. We will now connect to a very simple example of densification using Tableau's new data model. First, we want to connect to a server, and in this case, I'm using Google Sheets. So I'll click on that. It's going to open a new browser tab and ask me to validate my account. Once I've allowed access, I'll be able to select the particular worksheet that I need. And what we can see here is that we've got a number of different sheets within here. We're going to start with the most basic one, the basic densification sheet. Drag that onto the canvas, and we can see now that we have a single point in our data set. Our spreadsheet is very simple for this case. Let's go to sheet one and see what our single point looks like. If I double click on point, Tableau assumes that I want a sum of this value because it looks like a measure. Instead, however, I want to treat it as a dimension. What I can see is that I have a point with a value of one. This is a good start. Where we get into densification is once we edit our data set. There's a number of different ways that you can do this, and I would encourage you to check out the Fleurledge Twins blog, work, earlier work by Joe Mako, and a number of others in the Tableau community who have great resources on how to do densification. What we're going to do now is we're going to drag the same table right over top so that we get a union. If we double click on this now, we can see that Tableau in the physical layer has unioned our table together, and in particular, we now have two rows with this same point information. We also have a table name field, which is going to come in handy later. The table name and the sheet name are auto-created by Tableau, but can be quite helpful for these purposes. So let's go back to sheet one and see what's changed. 
what we can see here is that not very much has changed. It looks about the same. But if I put table name on here, I can now see that I have two points. If I flip these so it's a little easier to see, we now have two different table names, including one that ends in the number one. I'll change this to a circle chart just so the numbers are a little easier to see. Now that we have that, we can begin the process of densifying our data further. First off, I'm going to create a parameter, and I can base this on the point field, and I'm going to say it's going to have a range between 1 and 100. What we can do after we've created the parameter is we can make a calculated field. In this case, I've made one called point dynamic, and what it's doing is it's checking for the last character of the table name, and it's looking for the number 1. In this case, it'll use the value from the parameter we just made. Otherwise, it'll use the point value. So really, we're looking for this table over here, and we want to change the value for that. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to hit Apply to save my calculation, and I'm going to put my newly dynamic calculation onto the columns. So right now, everything looks the same. This is kind of expected. Let's show our parameter and try changing some numbers around. Right now, our point parameter is 1, so the value is the same as what's coming from our data source. But if I change it to a bigger number, say 30, now, now my point has shifted over to the right. This is the beginning part of our densification process. From here, we're going to remove table name. The reason for this is that Tableau has the ability to show the values in between the points that I've created. Our next step is to bin our values for this dynamic point. The reason for that is that Tableau is range aware for bins. So we can create a bin based on our point dynamic field, and we can tell Tableau that we always want it to be of size 1. And then we can hit OK. So if we now change to having our point dynamic available, and remove these other fields to clean things up a little bit, we can see now that Tableau has created 28 data points between the two values that actually exist in my data. Remember, value 1 comes from the first version of the table, and value 30 comes from the second, but it's based on the parameter that we see over here. If we increase the number of data points, we get the same effect. I'm going to set this to fit width before we start increasing this, and we can increase this up to 100, and we can see the effect of that. This is the beginning of how we do data densification in Tableau or at least one of the ways of doing data densification in Tableau. We will now take our dynamic points and turn them into a curve. This is the foundation of many of the charts that we've talked about previously. I'm going to duplicate my worksheet here and give this a little bit more descriptive title. This work is inspired by the Fleurlich twins. I encourage you to check out their website to learn more about this concept. What we're going to do first is we're going to take our point dynamic bin and put it onto detail instead of columns. We then have a couple of calculated fields that will rely on this. The first one gets us an x-axis value. The index that we see here tells us what point we're at. Essentially right now we have 100 points based on our parameter, so for each one of those we'll get a number between 1 and 100 increasing. We then multiply it by 12 divided by our parameter value minus 1 minus 6. In the end, this is just a mathematical thing to help us get the right number of points on the x-axis in the right location. We also have a function for y. This is really the part that turns it from a flat line into a curved line. So let's see how that looks. When we have two points visible, If we put our x value onto columns and we tell it that we want to compute using the point dynamic, we can now see that we have 100 points ranging between negative 6 and positive 6. If we put our y value onto rows, we now get a curve. If we turn this into a line, we get something that looks like a fairly smooth curve. You remember back in the beginning, we only had a single data point. We now have 100 that draws a curve. 
we can reduce this all the way down to two in this case. One doesn't compute because it's no longer a line. But if we change this to a, back to a scatter plot, we can see our points as we increase the numbers. As we get up towards 25, our curve shape becomes pretty obvious. We can also edit this if we so choose. So I take away the maximum and make it 10,000 points instead of 100. And we can see now that even though they're all circles individually, they really look like a curve, even more so if we tell Topo that it's a line. So this is the basic idea of how densification works. We can use it to create a whole variety of charts from here. Now that we've covered the concept of densification, we're going to get into how it can relate to standard data. Last but not least, let's tie this back to our example using BC headset data to show the enrollments at British Columbia's post-secondary institutions that are classified as research universities. So I'll double click on basic densification, edit my data source. I'm going to hit the X button over here on the right to back out of the physical data layer and back to Tableau's relationship data model. From here, I can add a number of other pieces. I can add institution locations if I want to make a map. And I'll tell it that it's a calculated relationship based on 1 equals 1. The 1 equals 1 allows us to have a row for every row in both tables. From here, we can relate to the total enrollment. So we'll drag that onto the screen. We'll relate it based on institution name. If we now go back to our worksheet, we can see that we have additional tables that are available as a result of this relationship. What we can do now is we can make a new worksheet that shows enrollment by institution name over time. institution on color, we get a stacked bar chart that shows how enrollment has grown substantially in British Columbia over the years that are included in this data set. Note, however, that this is not a perfect picture, especially in the earlier years where only a few institutions reported to it. We can change this to a percent of total, if we so wish, and we now get a sense of how the reporting looked year over year, but remember to watch out for years that not all institutions reported. And add this percentage to our label by holding the command button down we can add this percentage to our label so we get a sense so this is a fairly cluttered chart but it conveys the rough idea if we keep just the most recent year we now get a stacked bar chart that kind of approximates what we looked at earlier the advantage here is that we're not getting a multiplication effect based on our densified data, which we would have if we used densification in the physical layer rather than the relationship layer. So while this is a fairly basic dashboard, our densification and our enrollments don't impact each other in the way that we saw with the example earlier. We no longer see, say, Simon Fraser University with 34 million students. We only see it with 34,000, as, as is the intention. And if we so choose, we can put each institution with its own curve and its own color scheme. Though this doesn't tell us all that much. But it looks nice. So we can see now that using the same data source, we can have both a densified set of data as up here and a non-densified data down here. This saves considerable effort in data preparation and allows you to use the same data source for multiple purposes, including for data densification. This concludes our basic video on how to do data densification using Tableau's relationship data model. Thanks for watching.